This is James Simpson and continuing one of my tutorials into the introduction to ESP Vision. This is part three and I'm going to talk about scenery elements in Vision now. Um, now I've still got the same file open from tutorial two and uh, as you can see I've still got my lighting fixture here which we inserted using that instrument tool. Now this time I'm going to use the add scenery tool or add object. If I click on this it brings up a very similar window to the one we had before and in here we have lots of different things we can select. Um, we're going to start off with a pre-built room. Now being an American program everything's in feet and inches so you have to start learning to uh, to convert uh, feet to inches. I suggest getting an app <laughs> for your phone. It's what I do. Um, I spend most of my day converting feet back into inches and inches into feet and if I select a room here, uh, take a 100 foot, 100 foot room, it puts it on the end of my mouse, just the same as a lighting fixture, and allows me to just insert it there. And you see, I've still got one attached to my mouse, so in order to get rid of it, we have to click on the arrow symbol there, and now we've got a free mouse. Now, something I haven't really discussed and talked about very much is the camera movement, so we're going to talk about that now because we've got something we can have a look at. Um, I explained that you've got some tools up here, you've got a zoom tool, select that, left click and you can zoom in and out, panning, rotating, and, uh, and there's a free, free camera tool but I don't suggest you use this because you can get yourself quite lost. Personally, I prefer just to use the commands that the mouse gives me. Um, if you move your mouse around normally, you, uh, you just move the, the mouse cursor around. However, if you hold down your middle mouse button or your mouse wheel, it gives you a pan command so we can start to move the entire object around. And pull the mouse wheel back, we actually zoom out and we can zoom in again and move it in. So um, that should be fairly familiar to most people um, who haven't used 3D programs. We'd expect to find something like that. What might not be so familiar is how to rotate. This is a, a command that comes from 3D modeling programs. You have to hold down Alt and then your middle mouse click and it will allow you to rotate. Now you can see that we're rotating around the pivot that is connected to the camera and not the object we're looking at. For those of you that expect, uh, expect a camera to move like a computer game where we move around the object, think of this as a helicopter and we're controlling the position of the helicopter and we move around the object by moving our helicopter around it as opposed to moving the object itself. Now some 3D programs will allow you to spin the object inside uh, inside space but um, the programs that Vision talks to in the first instance such as um, Studio Max, Maya, uh, Vectorworks, they all work in this way that you have, uh, you have a camera that moves around the space and this is a ben beneficial when you start getting much bigger installations. Typically though, the camera always begins facing what we call uh, you know, the front of the stage. So imagine that we're sitting in the auditorium right now, and that's our, our stage face there. So generally, when you turn the camera on, it's automatically in the right place. I have set up some projects before where the architect's plan to come in and my camera's been automatically facing off into the side. So you have to learn to create new camera positions, and I'll talk about those in another tutorial. So here we go, we've got our, our room and now we can move around it. So there's our floor quite clearly. And here it is in our scene graph. Now if I select it, you see I've got some options coming up. Now each of these symbols means something different depending on whether it's a light bulb, the move icon, if it's got lots of spheres, that means it's a material, it's another move icon, and the kettle means a mesh. There's a story behind the kettle. Um, if you're interested, know it's the first ever 3D object ever made in a program. That's why it's uh, it's very common to see kettles used as uh, object symbols. Once we're in here in the properties menu, you can select visible to turn it off entirely. False means it's off. True means it's on. You might want to do this if it's an object of scenery that gets taken out of the way during a scene. Um, it's better to get rid of it altogether than to just move it because it still uses graphics power if you don't turn it off. If you've got quite a big model, you might want to see it gone altogether. Now in here we have all of our um, move commands. X, Y, Z 
means our position in our um, coordinate space. And x, y, z refers to position on the uh, on the stage. So x is our position across stage. Z is our position up stage and down stage. And y is our height. Now in CAD, if you're used to working in uh, 3D and CAD and Vexworks, your height is traditionally Z. <coughs> Excuse me. Now Z represents the uh, the height when you're dealing with architecture. This is because traditionally in architecture plans were drawn flat first of all, so we'd look straight down at our plan. It would be drawn around here in X and Y there. Z's component didn't come into it until we started doing 3D modeling, that is, and we suddenly needed a third dimension that became Z. The reason this program uses Y as its height is because in flying terms, and I'm talking about uh, literally flying scenery and flying people, we always think of the stage as being the, uh, the flat plane that you start working on. So X is your distance across, and Y is your distance above, which means that Z is your depth. So when you're flying someone, you tend to think of it starting here and moving to here in a flat plane. Now if it's going to move upstage at the same time, then that's depth, and that's then Z. So that's something to get your head around, is the idea that Z is height. If, you, if you're used to working in in architectural terms, as I was before I started using vision, it takes a long time to remember not to hit Z for height and it's Y. So here I've actually got a number in here for Z, because when I inserted it I didn't put it exactly in the, uh, the, the, the zero, zero, zero point, the base point of our, our model. Now it's very important to understand base points when it comes to architecture. Um, it just so happens that I inserted it uh, dead centre. Uh, I put the middle, um, right in the middle of the um, our, our model space and the height automatically goes in at zero because that's our ground. So if I actually put this back to zero, let's start there. What this means is that the centre of our object, which was right here when I inserted it, that is the centre of our entire uh, 3D space. All objects relate to this point here. So when we work with other people, or we have a sound plan, or we have a set plan, a lighting plan, if they all use that point as the same point, the front of the stage is zero, 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 right here. That means that all our objects will be in the same place when we put them into this file. And that's very important for coordination. There's nothing worse than having it a meter out or 1.36 meters out because it's very difficult to understand or notice that there's actually a difference. Uh, you think it's correct and actually it isn't. Um, if you all work off the same point then all our models will always be um, in, in, integrated with each other's. So here I can start to put in different, different heights and positions. Scale is the size of the object itself. And again, we have x, y, z in the same way. If I increase the scale by 2 in the z-axis, it should get deeper. So increase the depth by factor 2. If you want to scale it proportionally, you need to put them all at 2. So I've now made it twice as big. This is quite good if you've got, a, you know, need a quick get out of jail free card to be able to, um, quickly change the size of something, but realistically if you're doing an accurate model you shouldn't be touching any of this. It should be accurate the first time around. If it's not built to scale then you, you've, you're not building an accurate model and it's not going to be very good for you. Rotation. This is going to spin something around on its axis. Again remembering that the base point is actually at the front of this object, not in the middle. So when it spins it will spin around this point here. Um, if we select Y in the heights that means it will spin around on itself. So it's been about 90 degrees. So there, that's the same point there, it's spun itself around to the side, um, spin it by another 90 to 180, and it's now come back on itself. So now, that, that was the position we were looking at first, we were looking through this wall, and now we're looking at behind. Let's put it back to zero. And again, you can rotate it in the, in the x axis, and rotate it in the z axis. 